Hello, Brother Mandrew here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And um, it's now July 1948, and the British, despite our best efforts to persuade them otherwise, have decided to declare war on us. Now, obviously, this isn't allowed. Um, so we're going to do what we've done the previous few times that they've done this. We're going to send a bunch of ships to blockade them. Serves them bloody right. A few other things have changed. Uh, France is taking back northern France. Spain now owns southern France. Um, there have been a few rebellions and such, but other than that, not a huge amount. Eagle-eyed viewers can... Uh, Spot various things, but it is highly likely that we're going to get a domino effect now. Um, and again, the world's probably going to end up divide, <laughs> dividing into two, um, two factions. For one last war. Oh, jeez, and there's no game sound because I'm an idiot. Uh, there we go. That should fix it. And immediately they start losing transports. Canada wants a Lexington class. Yes, absolutely. Uh, they already have one. They can have another. Uh, and yes, we have fights. And I don't think the in-game audio is working, so I'm going to fix that and I'll be back in a second. Okay, that should be it fixed. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, so we've got the Dallas. She's found a convoy, uh, a destroyer, attack, and an ambush. Well, it, uh, the ambush is a no. <laughs> um, however, uh, let's start off with the Dallas. The Dallas against the Warrior. Similar tonnage. Um, and we have a Latvian destroyer. Oh, uh, no, sir. not even a destroyer. It's a light cruiser. Okay, helping us out. That is not what I meant to do. That is All right. There we go. Now, I haven't played much on uh, one point two point seven. The first time loading it up. Straight away, I do see a weird issue in that only half the guns are firing. Well, that's just fun, isn't it? And I am using the balance mod from 1.2.5, which uh, still works. fix themselves now? Are they firing all the guns? Nope. Just the forward battery. Oh, it might be because I'm on save, actually. I think it's firing the forward battery and that's lowering the accuracy. Let's try normal. Nope. Still only firing the forward battery. Weird. Ah, there we go. Now it's fixed itself weird problem. I'm going to cut back. 
You can see that they are opening a gap up to the transports. Which is nice of them. Oh, that was a good hit. More solid hits. Yeah, that cruiser took a big old whack. <laughs> Pretty much US inspired with the uh, Four triple turrets. So this still is holding up. They're just taking. Uh, pretty big hits to the extended portions of the ship. So we switch up to HG. Oh, hello. Once they an alert torpedo? Yeah, I think so. Destroyers, would you? Oof. To get to the main tower there. I think the manners is going to sink. Get the Nautilus instead? Or are they just maneuvering too much? Oh, nice hit. Remove the uh, destroyers as best I can. While well, we engage the transports with the port battery. all the transports down. Warrior, I think, is running. It's not great, but it's just about enough to protect you from kind of light shells. Um, you know, that'll keep out five and six inch guns quite nicely, I think. Um, pretty fast, okay armament. Mark are they? Oh, Mark fives, yeah. So she's not terrible. Um, Anti flood one is a little. Weak. Gen 3 radar. Stereoscopic 2 rangefinder, though. Jesus. Um, thinking about um, how to improve the A AI ships, 
and this is just a suggestion uh, that popped into my head is I think if the devs are a little bit more uh, aggressive with what is considered outdated tech just for the AI I don't know if you can do that um, so that certain components like Stereo 2 in 1948 are considered obsolete um, so that the AI cannot pick them um, I think that would be a good oh, uh, good option I think that would be a way of addressing the uh, you know sometimes a bit weird like this is a good ship um, and it let down by a poor rangefinder I would say um, and you do see that quite a lot it's like hey, it's an okay ship oh and the poor anti-flood um, or maybe just have the AI prioritize the best ticks a little bit more I don't know how it works the AI ship generator um, just just thoughts <laughs> there's a chance to hit in the Nautilus pretty good Let's see if we can take out the Nautilus there we go she doesn't have the armour to resist it Firing H E. Just try an AP, right? Salvo. Let me see what it does. Oh no, we got a pen there. A lot of ricochets though, but that is doing a lot more damage. slowed her up enough. I don't think she's going to get away. Dallas is hot on her heels. And now she goes, goes down due to the flooding. Perfect. Well, perfect for us anyway. Uh, yeah, just unable to really make much of a difference. Um, they might on paper be fairly similar, but the Dal Dallas has better armor and guns on the same displacement, which because the British prioritize speed. <laughs> you know, 28 knots versus 35 knots. Um, once you start trying to go really, really fast, you're going to be putting a lot of weight into your engines for not that much gain so yeah not the best right and then we have the ambush which I'm going to refuse to do even with <laughs> support from our allies all three of them look at that uh, no. Should we try to attack? No. I should have that option. 34 points. Yeah, we're faster than them. We should have the option to withdraw, but... Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be a... Loading the battle up and then running away job. And I will cut most of that out. Retreat. Retreat. And... Oh, uh, they might be able to fire, actually. The enemy ships, I mean. Yeah, they can. So. Smoke up. While we're doing it. Never know, they might score a hit. The, uh... 
Damato, yes, the Damato takes a hit. This is why standing orders are to not engage in this type of fight. So the uh, Commodore or Admiral or whoever it is in charge of this little flotilla is going to get roundly reprimanded. I think we're out of firing range now. So I will be back when the mission is over. See you soon. Welcome back. Uh, yep, we uh, took that hit on the Damato. She's going to be out for a few months, I reckon. Um, again, the standing orders are not to engage. Uh, heavy warships with destroyers and the commander of that task force decided to ignore it to their peril <sighs> words will be had meeting no biscuits no tea might let them have a seat <laughs> uh, right uh, two months okay not too bad and when the crew is back on their feet. Now this, on the other hand, this is more of an interesting fight. So we've got a Pritchett class, the Delbert D. Black, uh, up against the Whitehead. Now I've not had a destroyer duel in a very long time. So this should be interesting. That is, of course, if we even get a fight. Because Starting on a times 30 with the balance mod and um, against that destroyer that's presumably faster than me is uh, not a good sign. But it's a long time since I've just had two destroyers going at it. Oh, hello. No, this destroyer captain has a bit more about them than most. And they're coming in for an attack. It does look good. I've not actually looked at the Pritchett class for a while. It looks fantastic. Really nice little warship, if I say so myself. Scoring a few hits. Gunnery's a bit all over the place, though, to be honest. What's the range? 10 kilometers is a pretty long range for a destroyer fight. AP in there now. Torpedo, which I think will miss, but better safe than sorry. Oh, oh I saw it bending. <laughs> it almost looks like they they. 
curve into the enemy sometimes. Beautiful. Absolutely textbook by the uh, Delbert D. Black there. Fantastic work. Didn't take a single hit. The white head sunk. Very nice. And uh, <laughs> I know the US is a dry navy. Um, a bonus. A bonus and a, and a some form of small medal for the uh, gunner who did that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of swing bowling. Oh, that's a cricket term. No one's going to understand what I'm talking about with swing bowling. Um, curveball. There you go. The cur a curveball going straight into that destroyer. There you go. Um, right. Fleets are on the way. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> if, you, if you were the British and you had a, a flying boat or something, go over that and you see... See eight, five, and four. So it's 12, Seventeen, is that right? Seventeen battleships and five battle cruisers <laughs> steaming towards you. <laughs> I think you would probably just go. You know what? Let's give up. Apologies if I sound a bit. Bunged up, I am. <laughs> Belarus and Germany are pissed off at each other. Oh, okay. Kamchatka has oil. <laughs> ah, the Sacramento has found the immortality. This is the uh, cruiser that the destroyers were engaging with. They also have a destroyer escort. See how you deal with picking on something your own size. Oh, what a shot! <laughs> Main tower hit from 25 kilometers out. Jesus. Very good gunnery by the Sacramento there. Half deck pin. Stand up at range, this ship. Oh, hit a secondary gun in a vulnerable, sensitive spot. Aft. Extended hit. Again, another secondary gun. And another one. Could always. Could be just that we're hitting the same one again and again. Again. Just extended hits. This ship is good, but even without hitting the Citadel, we're um, basically blowing the stern off the ship. That's causing all sorts of problems. Oh, and yeah, I think there's a Citadel hitting this somewhere. Uh, maybe not actually. It's a 
a lot of uh, hurt at any rate. Yeah, looks like they're vulnerable to the stern, basically. Some torpedoes coming our way. Maybe a little generous. They're trying to limp away. In which case, switch up to the destroyer. Oh my word. <laughs> yeah, their armor's not holding up. <laughs> Pretty much obliterated by the Sacramento. Yeah, main belt pen. 40,000 and a second main belt pen for 20, 27 more or less, means that the Velox sinks. Give them the angle, use some HE please. It's just like, die! <laughs> and finally... Immortality sinks. <laughs> uh, um, I mean, she scored 11 hits. They couldn't go through the armor. Um, but uh, yeah, Sacramento with that. Very accurate fire. Um, and the ability to... Well, I guess the captains of... Or the... Navy Department has figured out that those immortalities are vulnerable at the stern. Focusing their fire on the stern section just below the main aft battery. Gave her the, too much flooding for it to keep effective fire up. Good work by Sacramento. Very good work. They start losing more transports. Russia's not happy with Germany. I can't imagine why. <laughs> yes, that's not worrying for the Russians at all. Uh, <laughs> now, we should have the British under a blockade this turn. Fleets are all in position. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I love the scientific notation. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. 1.1 million tons versus zero. Kashmir rising up. Interesting. Um, 
how many ships do the British have? Three battleships, two battlecruisers, and a light and two lights. I wonder where they are. They're not building anything. They're not repairing anything. And they're not refitting anything. Plymouth, empty. Portsmouth, empty. Empty, empty, empty. Empty, 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 empty. Single submarine, some submarines. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So wherever those ships are. Oh, here they are. <laughs> they are. Wait, wait, which way are they sailing? Are they going back to Resyth or are they going? Where the hell are they trying to go? Okay, they're trying to head to, for some reason, they're trying to head here. Don't know why they're trying to head here. They would be best turning around. We do have a squadron here, but three battleships, two battlecruisers is sizable. Um, we're probably best just waiting for them to come all the way over here, and then the Pacific Fleet based here at Singapore can deal with them. Yeah, I very much expect that we're going to have someone else join the war, or the war's going to become more complicated very soon. But yeah, we'll continue to choke off the British Isles from their trade. And let's see if we can't get more bits of it to collapse. They've already lost India, which is a pretty big deal. That's a point, actually. We've been selling the Indians quite a lot of powerful ships. Uh, so it's possible that the British fleet is going to run into an Indian task force. It's the building submarines? Yep, building submarines. So now Germany's at war with Spain. Right. <laughs> Britain loses more transports. Right, where did that task force go? Yeah, here they are. Heading around. We do have some heavy cruisers out here. Again, I don't really want to take on capital ships with cruisers. But, yep, lying in wait over here. We've got a battleship and a battle cruiser. India is currently defending against China, I think. Mind you, I don't know who owns Northern India. Oh, it's Britain. Okay. Yeah, France, Austria-Hungary. About to enter the war, I think. Let's... Uh, Preempt that. <laughs> Spool up a couple of fleets. Probably next turn they'll declare on us. Maybe the turn after. But it won't be long. Or the British can surrender. Okay. Don't really want any of those. Although Zanzibar might be fun. I'll take Zanzibar off you. Yeah. <laughs> yep, here we go. <laughs> Fine, France. <laughs> yeah, Wales. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> Uh, okay, Britain did defeat the Kashmiri Rebellion, but Wales! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, who are we at war with now, and who are we not at war with? So we're not at war with Britain, although we probably will be again very, very shortly. Um, we're at war with France and Austria hungary probably going to be with Italy and Spain soon. So uh, we'll have this one covered... Fleets. Yeah, so, a fleet from Miami you can take up a position in the Western Med. Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff lying around. Mm. Oops. Let's get this fleet ready. So we've got the Mississippi. We have the Tennessee. We have the Canary and the Ellis. And we have the Pennsylvania. Which we'll do for the Eastern Med. And yes, I know I could move these fleets, but I'm 99% sure that Britain is going to be pieced out for like two months at most. Yep, here goes Spain. <laughs> Did say it was going to happen. France and Germany, United States and Italy, Germany and Italy, Russia and Italy, and the, yep. <laughs> and there we go, Brit as well. So, yeah. I did say it was going to happen. <laughs> and we immediately smash into some French ships. Let's see if they're still ancient or not. Nope, those look new. Well, that's fun. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's like, oh, hello! And then immediately just opening up on them. Those are big old shells. Ooh. I'll clip by an eight inch shell. 14,000 damage. Okay. Yep. Now the hits are coming in.
20-inch shell ends the career of that warship. And another 20-inch shell pretty sure ends that one. <laughs> Good grief! 181,000 damage in a single hit. You know, this is a brutal slaughter. I mean, why you thought a bunch of light cruisers and destroyers should be going up against a battle line, I have no idea. much for the French squadron <laughs> didn't even get a chance to shoot um, as the uh, battleships competed for big number awards <laughs> um, yeah Nevada doing pretty well with their 14s but Oklahoma and Delaware just yeah, it's scoring <laughs> two hit from the Oklahoma, one of which was an overpay, which won't have done very much. And yeah, that one huge 180,000 damage hit. <laughs> Utterly ridiculous. I mean, they, look, this thing sunk with only 10,000 damage. Right? It doesn't take that much damage to destroy. 230,000 damage. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Right. Well, that'll be France blockaded then. <laughs> I suspect. And I've got to give some credit to that British Admiral who you know, was kind of saying uh Hey, look, I uh, <laughs> I think we should maybe stop before things go tits up. But, uh, <laughs> go on enemies and goodness, those, all sorts of things. Oh, that, that's a shame it didn't go through. Because, uh, yeah, now we have... Um, well, apart from Japan, it hasn't joined the Alliance yet. But they are at war. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So it's a full world war, people. Britain, France, Italy, Austria-Hungary and Spain against Germany, Russia, Japan, China and the United States. Let's have a look and see who has what. Germany. Pretty big fleet. Good for us. Good for the Allies. Russia. Um, well, lots of destroyers. That's good anti-submarine work that they can do, uh, assuming they put depth charges on them. Uh, but otherwise, nothing too spectacular. Japan, lots of battle cruisers. I like that. Pretty decent size of navy. China, a surprisingly big navy. Pretty decent. And, of course, us with what on paper doesn't seem like the biggest navy, but... <laughs> that's a lot of capital ships anyway let's have a look at our opponents uh, so first up we have Britain who has that one task force that is sailing into an increasingly hostile world for reasons we have France who has a battleship four light cruisers and three destroyers not very impressive. We have Spain, who has nothing except submarines. We have Austria-Hungary, who has the most surface stuff of any of them. 15 capital ships. All right, Austria-Hungary. Uh, and then Italy, which just has a bunch of light cruisers and submarines. 
That's it. <laughs> Jesus. Right. That's going to be our Eastern Med Fleet. Go and pop yourself down here. Might actually invade Rhodes. Uh, I don't think there is anywhere else obvious to go and take. Let's see what the next turn brings. Blockades is my guess. <laughs> Blockades and a lot of submarine missions. Which, I mean, submarines are supposed to be weaker now, which is good. Um, I still think submarines should be changed in how they operate, personally. But, um, yeah, they're supposed to be weaker, but I have seen a few people saying they're suddenly weirdly strong in one or two battles, and I've seen that myself. Uh, it does happen, so they always make me nervous. I don't like submarine fights, because you have to auto-resolve them. I think that's... I mean, it... Submarines absolutely should be in the game, but not in their current form. That's my opinion. I, I would remove them completely with their current, with the way they work currently. I would just take them out. Um, because, you know, submarines, they're there to, yeah, sure, occasionally take a pot shot at a at a big ship that's, you know, sailing around on its own or doing something stupid. But mostly, they're there to sink transports. And they don't do that very well. So, there's no real incentive for me as a player to build the things. Because they don't do the job that I need them to do. Which is just to sink transports. At whilst being very hard to counter. Um... You know, so you can kind of enforce a blockade without having to invest in surface ships. Now, this is something else that people did say, that building new ship bug crash thing is back. Which is entirely possible. Uh, so I'm going to stop waffling about submarines. I'm going to end the episode. I'm going to see you next time for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye for now.